Hey guys, I'm Kranus X, welcome to another video, and this time in Tree of Savior, we're gonna be going about theory crafting, because a lot of you have kept asking me, like, oh, like, what are some builds that you have, Kranus? You know, because the game is launched now, it's just like, here are some builds that I find, that I find to be uncommon. I mean, there, of course, I'm pretty sure there's a few people that have probably dabbled into it and things, but generally, most of the time, it's like, I run into a lot of, like, the same classes, like, a lot of people are Linker, Pyromancer or like Highlander Barbarian, for instance, like there's like very little Peltastas, like Peltastas, it's like pretty much a tank class, and there's like, I've never seen a Rodelero, so, you know, today is like, I'm gonna do a theory build on like each of these classes here, obviously like it takes me very long to actually fulfill any of these theories because it's like, it's a lot of grinding, it's a lot of playing, and then it's a lot of like, vamping and whatever before I actually finally get somewhere but some of them are very solid in concept so it's just like it's not even too far-fetched it's like it's quite a solid build in my head and it's like all the things that back up and reasons behind it makes sense on why like a particular build that I think would be good for a character but um, you know don't let this kind of like exterminate any kind of experimentation that you're gonna go out and it's like, you know, obviously like there's very many choices. It's not one one way fits all. If it was, it'd be a very pointless game. <laughs> okay, and then like there's like very few Thaumaturges, very few Chronomancers, and those two classes have a lot of stuff to do with them. But not very many people utilize them. I always see tons of elementalists, wizards, and like uh, all the other elementals, but they're like never the utility or support. So let's get right into this. Um, first class I'll be going over is the Swordsman. So Swordsman is mostly an attack class here, so um, what, what do I want to go about on this? It's been generally like um, your first first few skills, almost everybody picks up gung-ho like max level or whatever. You may be one level into pain barrier just to uh, get yourself like a stun, stun and resistance barrier against like uh, knockbacks and cancels and things. Um, concentrate gives a lot of bonus damage. Now one thing that you should always keep in mind is also these attributes here. So attributes is like every class has their own inherent attributes and in this website, uh, the description, the, the website at this, this, the website is in the description below and this is also a Tree of Savior base, uh, it's a fan site, it's very very useful, I highly recommend going here to mess around with things and, and kind of like configure stuff out for yourself before you actually like, uh, um, build your character because like when you advance in the game it doesn't actually show you the further choices of the class whereas the skill simulator can actually help you do that so and and to see what's up and what's coming up next kind of thing so bash is like something i take in as well because it has aoe and it's got three charges and you can just like swing it at everything on top of that if you take a swordsman uh two uh you can actually have all your attacks hit uh cost stun with a 20 percent chance like every attack will have a 20 percent chance to stun an enemy which is actually really high if you ask me and then at, as well if you have um if you have swordsman 2 you can increase the aoe attack ratio of of the bash so um that's that means you can hit more targets basically more aoe ratio means more targets you can hit uh also monster sizes um based on the monster size if the monster is really large it i think it takes up three aoe ratios or whatever and then like mediums are two and small monsters are one so you know you have to do some math there so if you have like an aoe attack ratio of six or whatever you can only hit two large mobs kind of thing or six small mobs or three three medium sized mobs um, different weapons also do bonus damage as well um, but this build here is that I'm gonna go swords 2 uh, I, <clears throat> and then what I was actually building this is actually like one character I was building and before I kind of stopped for a while uh, I went swords 2 most people go Highlander and then into Barbarian which is a more common thing to do because Highlander has like a passive uh, class attribute that increases critical damage by like 50% or something but I, I like the stun a lot more Stun means they just stand still and you get to whack them as much as you want. <laughs> so I go Swordsman and then I go Barbarian 3 because I just want... This is like basically a pure DPS class. Uh, nothing really special here. <laughs> so it's uh, 2 Swordsman, 3 Barbarian into a Doppelsoldner. And you can either finish off with uh, another Doppelsoldner or a Squire. Or you can even go Corsair if you want, or Templar. But you'll be mostly DPS, so... Um, <clears throat> in terms of, like, skills, the Barbarian, I take... 
everything with Helm Chopper, Cleave, uh, and then I'd hold the five skill points until the next advancement of Barbarian. Shove that into more Cleave, Helm, and then add it all into Sizem. And then add this, maybe like one into Warcry just to kite things, and then the rest into Frenzy. So you'll be an absolute boss killer, you'll be great for the missions at level 100 plus. I don't actually know how well this will turn out because I've never gotten this far with this kind of a build. This is again, theory crafting. And same with that uh, third advancement, more cleave, more helm chopper, maximum, size them, <clears throat> and then you'll be out of skill points. Uh, some people will take giant swing, which is actually pretty interesting because you can like flip an enemy around and toss them around everywhere. If you need to actually like see skill videos, you can just click these videos here and it will show you what it does. And basically this is giant swing. <laughs> and just swing them, swing them around and, and then toss them away. But um, if you don't put all your points into Helm Chopper or say for instance a cleave or whatever, then put it into Pouncing. Pouncing lets you run around and chop things and whatever and consumes your stamina while you're running around and you do continuous damage. So it's actually pretty good. Um, actually, I think that would be a lot better. Um, cleave, you definitely want maxed because this thing does bonus damage on, on crit and on stunned enemies it does even more damage. So that's why you have Helm Chopper. Helm Chopper is to help with the stun and the cleave. And that's also what this restraint here is for from Swordsman 2. That 20% chance on every hit will cause a stun. So if you cause a stun, use your cleave right away and you'll probably one-shot a mob and maybe even overkill it like to no, to no end and then get mega bonus EXP and drops. And then finally, uh, once Barbarian's maxed out, you take on uh, Doppelsolner for the uh, Deeds of Valor. Uh, you can do double pay, double earn, and also spin to win Cyclone. So <laughs> that's what that's for, spin to win. And then you, if you take a second one, you can do more of that and add more to it. But I didn't really think this far because like by about rank 7, that's about level 220 or so. So by then, it's uh, you should have a pretty solid idea of like what the skills you want anyways. So that's like a swordsman build, guys. <clears throat> So in terms of a wizard build, this is one that I like to do a lot and it's uh, I'll be, I guess I'm sure in this build because it's like in, I did it in the closed beta test and I only did it because I noticed how so little people actually go this route is basically going into the Thaumaturge. Um, you, might, you can either ignore the Chronomancer side or whatever but uh, a Thaumaturge is extremely powerful. Um, a lot of people say no, it's not. It's like kind of weak compared to like the other elementalists. Sure, if you're if you're soloing, but if you're if you're in a party, you are probably the best utility buff class there is compared to everything else. So, uh, if I generally go Wizard three, and then I go Thaumaturge to maximum, and then whether or not you want to go Chronomancer is another thing. But uh, I go all the way to Thaumaturge three. And then you finish it off with a runecaster. So I don't know if you can do runecaster, because then these these spells look like they're really huge on buffs, and I don't know if that's a requirement of a previous class. Because I know like for clerics you need priest in order to become a chaplain, but I don't know about a runecaster because a runecaster here looks really good. Um, but if you can't do runecaster, then I would definitely go with uh, either an alchemist just so you have like some different things to use and make yourself some money in the process because Thaumaturge 3 with Wizard 3 is already extremely powerful. Um, I have no idea what Featherfoot is here, but I mean, uh, or you can go Psycho Kino either. Psycho Kino is pretty good. So the way why I did this is uh, Wizard 3. Wizard 1, it's uh, you would put it all into Energy Bolt. People would be like, oh, this Energy Bolt's useless, but Earthquake only hits once. And it takes forever to cast, and you can't really like move and, and charge it up and then just unleash it. Um, you can take Lethargy if you want as well. Uh, I have uh, Reflect Shield Max for, well, I don't know why, it's just I, I use it, that's why. So, um, and then Energy Bolt uh, to 10 on the second one. Um, definitely want Sure Spell. Sure Spell works really well now since Reflect Shield got fixed and before, during the beta test, it was bugged. It actually caught, like with Reflect Shield on, you can actually uh, cast without being interrupted as long as the shield existed, but they changed that so it doesn't work anymore. So Sure Spell is very good. <clears throat> and then Magic Missile at uh, Wizard 3 got buffed to hell, so it's like the bullets bounce and chain off everything, so great for massive mobs. Quick cast, you need this maxed as well. 
and then the rest into energy bolt and then the other eight points you can flop it into whatever you like i generally just put more into reflect shield because i never use earthquake so and then uh let's see so i'll explain why i did all these choices after i go through the skills here so thaumaturg very simple it's uh get swell left arm maxed uh, ASAP and then get swell body and then you can get transpose if you want. I, I never actually got shrink body because I didn't really see a point to using it. Um, you can but I, I like the swell body a lot more because it uh, gives the enemy double HP but then it also doubles the EXP and loot drop. So whereas if you shrink the target then you, you're just uh, lowering its AOE ratio so that means whoever does more AOE can hit more of the large targets if you shrink them into small targets. So. But generally, um, yeah, that's what I go with. I went with Transpose. Transpose is basically a uh, switcher into and con. So um, in terms of stats, you can just flood all your stats into int. And you don't even need con because because of Transpose, you can split them later. You can actually split your int, int and con in half and they'll just be uh, dispersed between the two of them. So you'll have like enough HP to survive. And then at Thaumaturge 2, you get Swell Left Arm again. Uh, you can get more swell body if you want, that'll make the duration last longer, giving your party or other people a chance to kill the enemy fast enough before it reverts back to its regular size, which means you actually healed it for 50% of its health. So, <laughs> you don't you don't want to make sure this buff runs out, you want to make sure you actually kill the target with this buff on. And then, uh, swell right arm, you can probably pick up a reverse side if you want, and like, take one level off of the swell body and just pop it into reverse eye because this is i'm pretty sure this is a pvp move or it'll help you uh with bosses that drop like circles and stuff at thaumaturge 3 more swell left arm more swell right arm and the swell brain and that'll be practically it it's a very simple class extremely powerful though uh where the power comes from is basically the swell left arm and the swell right arm <clears throat> so the weapons that you want with this kind of build is actually an art dagger, which kind of everybody holds anyways, and then either a rod on your other hand, so then when you use swell left arm and swell right arm, you get a massive magic attack boost. Like look at this, at level 15 it's plus 154 magic attack and physical attack. That is added onto your spells as well. And then on top of that, uh, swell right arm can do the same thing. If you're holding a dagger, like an art dagger for instance, that'll be an extra like bonus 127 fire damage on all your spells on top of a uh, physical magical attack boost of 111 on base. So if you have full max attributes here as well, then the full attributes is um, 304 magic attack. You add the dagger as well, and that's another, uh, let's see, 150 on top of that. So that's 261 on this. So you have about 565, is it? I think that's 565 and then you have swell brain as well you add another 45 int on top of your wizard like you know all all int stats and if you have the maximum attributes on this as well that's another 100 int so it's 145 int so in total you get about 600 attack boost from that and that's not it though it's like it continues after this why you went wizard 3 here for a reason is for quick cast. So quick cast increases the damage by another 50% when you have this max and you turn it on. You when you turn it on is 50% overall damage. So basically you practically get another half of that extra power from the 600 and whatever that you get from all the Thaumaturge buffs, the three buffs. So it's about like an extra 300. And that's the, I think quick cast is calculated after calculations. And, and swell left arm and swell right arm is increasing base damage, so that's not calculated into crits. Crits is basically going to accentuate that and explode it into madness. And um, <laughs> this is why I thought this build was insane, and I'm like, why does nobody use Thaumaturge? I'm like, it's the strongest buff class there is. Three buffs and you just like insane damage. It's insanity, it's unbelievable. And I remember like, I had one in a party and we finished a mission in 10 minutes, the bosses literally drop because this is party-wide buff and you just keep it on forever and it, it, it it's just unreal. <laughs> it's like the most broken thing I ever thought of and I was like, what the hell? I'm like, why does nobody make, make use of this? 
And then Energy Bolt and Magic Missile is pretty much the most of your damage. Uh, Energy Bolt, you want to uh, enhance this as much as possible as soon as you can. So it's a multiplier, it uh, increases damage on its base level uh, the per by percentage-wise. Uh, same with Magic Missile as well. And then when you, you, you couple Quick Cast with that, the damage just goes through the roof. And you practically like one-shot everything. Um, or at least that's what happened when I was playing. And then um, if you got magic amplification as well, that'll increase that damage even more. Magic amplification for magic uh, attacks and spells is basically a variable damage. So say you have, if you have zero magic amplification, then your damage will always do like practically the same number. What if you have magic amplification, it's like an extra amount of damage that you can possibly do on top of the original amount. That's what magic amp is. Why the fuck does the phone always ring when I'm recording? <laughs> Jesus. But um, yeah, so that's how wild this damage can go with this build here. Um, yeah, so quick cast on top of like all these buffs, it'll just be like an overall boost. And then if you have these uh, attacks enhanced as well, the damage on that goes way high as well. And finally, if you hit targets with swell body um, debuffed, and you have this swell body additional damage, you can do up to an extra 60% additional damage at max attribute level. So 60% on top of a 50% boost with a 604 some odd like base attack power boost. Y your numbers just go through, like it goes up like a hyperbole on a scalar chart kind of thing. It's retarded, and I'm just like why did nobody use this? And if you have a full party full of wizards with using other spells or whatever and they're all like uh, Pyromancer 3 or Cryomancer or even Psychokino, their damage goes way high too. So this is probably like one of the strongest builds that I've ever come up with. Um, and I find it to be interesting too because you're half, you're half utility and you're half damage. So, and you have, you should be sought out for quite very well. So just make sure you hold a weapon in both hands. If you hold a shield, on the other hand, then uh, the swell right arm will increase your defense by a wild amount instead. And uh, transpose is for survivability. It, the higher you have this, um, the longer you can live. Um, you might not want to put so many points into swell body and put more into transpose so it lasts longer. Um, it's a very good survivable skill so you don't get one-shotted by late enemies. And that's a wizard build, guys. And finally for Archer, I really don't know what to do with Archer. All I know is that I wanted to make make a Musketeer. If you're making a Musketeer, um, then go into Archer 2. And then once you have Archer 2, get a Coral Shooter. At, or No, not even Coral Shooter. You can go Sapper, Sapper 3. You can go Sapper 3 or, or Coral Shooter. I, I would actually go with Sapper because you get to play with bombs and explosives and shotgun traps and Claymore. Claymore is just like... Plunk. Boom, it's like uh, rock salt in the face at the enemy. <laughs> and then, f uh, what was it? You get to Sapper 3, and then I forgot what happens at rank 6. Because uh, you don't want a Schwarza Raider. A Schwarza Raider, because you use pistols, you don't use a rifle. So that's actually a waste of an advancement if you're going to become a Musketeer. You can either go Sapper, and then I think either Archer 3. Or you can go Coral Shooter just for the Pavis defense, but I don't quite remember. And Caltrops are really useful too. Um, so yeah, go between either Archer or or Coral Shooter. So that's all I can think of. Or you can go with Scout too, whatever. You can have some cloaking, more fitted towards PvP, but I'm a PvE-oriented player in this game, so that's why I wouldn't really choose that. Uh, Hunter and Mugushi, like... Archer, I feel like there's a lot of weird things you can do in the Archer, but everybody goes Ranger instead, so it's kind of like everybody just the same build, and, or they go with Coral Shooter. Coral Shooter is like more uncommon than the Ranger, everybody goes Ranger because of the Barrage and the AoE and whatever, but late game, I don't know, I, I feel like I played a Ranger to 57 and it got boring as fuck. <laughs> like I just I just couldn't stand it, it was, it was not interesting, it was just lame and... Like, it was really fast. You got to 57 in, like, maybe, like, an hour or two. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? That's hella fast. But at the same time, I'm just like, oh, nothing cool about this. <laughs> to me, anyways. I mean, if <laughs> I'm not shitting on your parade. If you actually enjoyed it, then enjoy it and do it. So, I just don't like it. So, I'd probably go with Archer 3, maybe. Just because you can do kneeling shot. 
at max level 10, and the oblique shot is really useful for just, uh, like, it's like a double shot, basically. It's a simple bounce. Swift step at 15, basically, you can, like, move and shoot almost at regular walk speed. And then finally, you go Musketeer. Musketeer's got, like, a rifle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I, I don't really have much to say about this other than that, like, I don't really play the Archer class very much. Except that I, I think the Sapper class would be very interesting, but I only got an Archer up to, like, I re-rolled it and then I got it up to rank 2 again, and then I stopped at about, like, 46. It was really easy to level, you just pick up Oblique Shot at the beginning, and then, uh, you literally, well, pick up one level at first because you're not going to have enough SP to use it if you level it to 5. It's, like, expensive as crap, so leave it at level 1 and then spam this everywhere. Uh, multi-shot is a charge shot, but it shoots, like, a bunch of arrows into a single spot. I don't actually use full draw. Swift step, very useful, increases evasion later, and then when you pick up Archer 2, kneeling shot is good for the dungeons or whatever, you can keep at a range and still hit things. And then the multi-shot is against bosses, but you also want to pick up a swift step. Swift step is basically more movement, more evasion. It, you, you'll probably be geared towards evasion and wearing the leather armor. Uh, I don't actually use heavy shot. It's still like just the basic, basic attacks here. Uh, probably max out oblique shot to like level 8 or something. And then finally at sapper, I definitely take the claymores. I don't know about detonate traps, probably one level into it because I don't know how that actually works, or maybe not. Um, I forgot if stake stockades... Oh, stake stockades... Oh yes, definitely stake stockades is like Spike's defense move. Uh, kind of an attack, but still very useful. <clears throat> and then you got four extra points. You can conceal, this is great for like guild wars on a map. Uh, PvP, you know... <laughs> Hide your traps in there and then just like freaking booby trap the entire map kind of thing if you're having a war with another guild. Uh, <laughs> oh by the way, if you need to make guilds, you have to be a Templar, so only swordsmen can make guilds. I actually think that was actually kind of interesting how only one one particular class can make guilds. Uh, and then finally, like Sapper 2, more Claymore. Definitely the Collar Bomb. <laughs> Collar Bomb, Stake Stockades, and the Collar Bomb, I didn't... The Broom Trap is actually in... looks crazy strong. It's like a gigantic spin of a triangular circle here. Like, that is a huge area. That's almost screen-wide. So, you probably want to put at least one point into each of these and figure out which way you want to go first. But I actually just like the Collar Bomb because you get to attach it on something and then just run away. Uh, and then um, I don't. I looked at the spike shooter. I actually don't like how it works. So I'd rather put it into like more claymore <laughs> and more collar bomb because that attack count goes up to a thousand two hundred, and you can set up like ten of them, which sounds ridiculous. So and then the broom trap itself is also really powerful too. Uh, at max, it does five hundred forty-five, and it lasts fifteen seconds. So it's just gonna be spinning around for fifteen seconds. That's actually quite a lot, and then once you drop it, I'm pretty sure you can just run around. And then Archer 3 at uh, rank 6 for more kneeling shot if you want, uh, or, yeah, or and Swift Step kind of stuff. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't really think you need to pick up Twin Arrows. It shoots two arrows at an enemy at the same time, but I'm just like, eh. If you look at the required stance there, it doesn't say Rifles as well. This is all towards geared towards musketeer. So musketeer uses a rifle. If it doesn't say uh, like rifle in there, then you, it it won't work. <laughs> it won't it, it won't work. You'll be sorely disappointed when you reach musketeer. You'll be like, why are half my skills unusable? <laughs> so that that's the whole point with this build here. And then uh, let's see, two hand bow, bow and cannon, bow and pistol, bow and artifact. You know. Yeah, it doesn't say rifle on there. Um, if it actually works with rifle, it'll say with those skills. But it says it says required. If it doesn't say required, then like yeah, rifles can use it. But you know this this doesn't say it. So uh, I'm trying to find one that says it, but it, there's none. Because <clears throat> if you look at the musketeers musketeer skills, it says uh, required stance musket. 
and none of these uh, archer skills say they do and this is why you don't go uh, ranger or whatever if you're going to become a musketeer because musketeers like very specific trait of skills <laughs> and also uh, musketeers also really heavy on single target and also really really geared towards PvP as well so it's, it's a very specialized class if you ask me even though I've never reached there that's what it feels like in theory so you know theories can't be confirmed until you make it and I'm just like god damn like it's gonna take me a lifetime just to get like it out there so that's why I made this video instead then finally, I'm giving you another build for the Cleric. So apart from the ones you guys seen in the videos, uh, this one is uh, the one... Actually, I'll just give you the build that I was doing in the videos. So this is the build that I was running. I was making a different kind of support. Almost every Cleric I've come across has either like three Priest, one Crivis kind of thing, or like a lot of Priest and like some Dievdurbis or like Pardoner Priest. Priest, 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 priest. It's like priest everything. So I, I wanted to move away from that. So I did something with no priest. And I did a uh, cleric. And then I went crivis, crivis, crivis. And then uh, first I was going to do partner because I wanted to sell dino scrolls. And then afterwards I thought that was actually a really bad idea. And then <laughs> I didn't want to like screw my character over. So instead I went paladin. And then a lot of you thought I was going to go monk, but I didn't go monk. I went paladin. And after Paladin, I would I went Oracle, <laughs> and then after, like, <laughs> completely unknown, most people were like, why Oracle? And then afterwards, I went, uh, finally, I would go Cabalus at the very end. <laughs> okay, that's that's actually where I was going with, with the character in that video. Uh, what happened was that I wanted to make a different kind of support class that actually worked with a priest, because there were so many priests out there. I figured I might as well just try and reach the buff cap with like another half support class that involved no priest buffs. So that's that's why I went this way. It's still very, it's like full on support. You have no attack class here. This is all green icon classes. So, and you guys know I only had one freaking attack for like that entire run through as a crevice. <laughs> Apart from like the two other sub attacks, but I don't really consider them attacks because they can't hit flying enemies. So when you're a cleric, max heal, of course, you need this as a he to be a support. Uh, cure as well, um, and safety zone. You don't really need deep protected zone unless you're gonna become like a monk or something or like an attacker. Uh, I really like wouldn't suggest it unless you're gonna become a fighter or a priest. Like, priest can go into a monk and it works really well. Same with, like, uh, you need Crivis 2. If you have Crivis 2 with, like, priest 2 and then into a monk, uh, the Crivis is for the Divine Stigma buff, and the priest buffs is, like, the help attack. And then with a deep protected zone, that also helps as well. But, um, yeah, I didn't go that way. So, Crivis here, Mag Zyvis first, of course. This is your most powerful attack. <laughs> And then enhance it as much as you can, otherwise you will do nothing else. This is also like one of the highest attack damage skills in the game, apparently. A lot of players that I ran across saying like, you know, a, a Krivis 3 with Zybus at level 15 kind of out DPSs anybody for a very short moment when both circles are placed. Um, Dino at level 5, and uh, you can go Zy time. I went Zy to... How the hell do you pronounce that shit? Zal? I'll just call it Zal. <laughs> so I bring Zal to level 3 and then I had all Chris at level 2. Um, and then actually when I got to second rank, I didn't increase this any further. I went Zybus max, Divine Stigma max, and then two points into Zal and then the rest into all Chris. And then at Krivis uh, 3, I went of course Zybus level 15, Divine Stigma 10. <laughs> And one level into Melstis and the rest into Alcaris. Uh, or you can go take one off and put one into Dino. Why you don't increase Zal is because um, this helps with crit damage and everything, but if you raising Spirit as a stat, it increases its effect already. So it's kind of pointless. Whereas Alcaris is like, this thing is extremely useful. It grants fire resistance, lowers the HP recovery time when in battle. Uh, the base recovery time, I think, is 20 seconds. And at high at level eight Alcris, that already chops it in half. So it goes down to uh, let's see here, eight and a half seconds. I think it was twenty seconds. Yeah. So if I'm wrong, whatever, just correct me in the comments. Um, 
but this is very useful and especially when you have the maximum enhance on the uh, passive here as well it makes the hp regen go really really high and you it's kind of like a passive like regeneration that occurs really fast and that was the reason with going with uh, Paladin as well. Paladin has restoration and that's also more HP recovery, but the base time isn't lowered with Paladin. It's still like 20 seconds hella long. So you couple that with Alcaris and that HP recovery comes back really fast. It's like a, you become a battery, you become an HP battery. And then uh, Melstus is just to like keep Divine Stigma on if you've exhausted all your spells as a support, as, a, as this support because you, you can actually exhaust all your skills and put them all on CD and have nothing else to spend spend on other than run around or hit something. And re I'd rather keep a buff keep the buffs like running so then they don't have to be refreshed. Uh, Divine Stigma at level 10 is pretty insane. 78 int and strength. You practically become a fighter sort of a little bit too. <clears throat> so part of your damage comes from Divine Stigma. And Zal will help you land criticals on enemies that uh, have high resistance it just lowers the resistance and also increases critical attack so it's like bonus 200 to 300 like uh, critical attack damage or something it's it's added after the multiplier it's not added into the multiplier so that's that's what critical attack is from Zal. this also gives magic amplification too so if you have the attributes or whatever the magic amp will help your zybus do more damage divine stigma if you have if you kill an enemy that's stuck by this debuff struck by this debuff then zybus again will be enhanced from that buff <laughs> for more damage which is insane if you have a linker in your party and they have joint penalty light lightning tell them to link it all right away <laughs> and then do the hangman's not to gather them in one spot and drop your zybus circle right there and you'll literally kill the entire like group of mobs that they linked if they have joint penalty lightning because they'll It'll do 50% more lightning damage. And this thing hits 19 times at level 15. So it goes a little out of control there. And if you get that Thaumaturge wizard too, oh my god. <laughs> like that can go crazy. Yeah, Jesus. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> and then when you go to Paladin, you get resist elements as well. Okay. You max this out. Um, and then you get smite you get you get a few levels in the smite and then like the rest in the turn undead as well But you definitely want resist elements at max. You might not want restoration at max I put it at max, but you want it at least at level three so you can start learning the attributes That's one of the things there um, because you're not really much of a battle class I don't actually use I don't actually rank up smite for for that reason because you'll mostly be putting all your points into int con and spirit so just pick the three there obviously int should be your most important stat in this build uh, you want con for your survival and you want spirit to help boost your zalcii um, other than that like you won't really have much of a mana problem or an sp problem uh, with this class because the cooldowns are so long and you don't spend enough to actually burn the sp down and if you do it's like you'll be the last person to run out of sp in a party anyways or at least you should be um, resist elements this thing is insane too nullification chance that is crazy it's a chance to basically block an entire attack it's a crazy strong defense on top of that if you cast it like near an enemy it also reduces their resistance to the properties and lightning is one of them so that helps your zyvis again so basically everything will help this one singular attack okay with this build this is why i built it this way so everything is to help this one attack this one freaking lightning circle that just fries the shit out of everything. <laughs> okay, that's that's what this is all about. And then turn undead is also works upon spirit. If you have high spirit, the chance to insta kill like demons and mutants go up drastically. Um, you want this at at least level two, so that's why you also want to raise spirit as well, which helps two of your other skills: turn undead and the uh, crit booster skill. And then finally, when you get to oracle. Oracle, um, this is basically for item hunting or just uh, knowledge and information as well on enemies. Uh, forecast is extremely useful. It shows like uh, AOE circles and cones on ally attacks and enemy attacks. Very useful on like also PvP as well. So if somebody's using an like, AOE shit, you will see their AOE like uh, area in, on from other players. Uh, counter spell I heard is also extremely good. It nullifies magic, but um, what was it? The other thing with forecast is if you learn the attributes here, increase nullification, 
this nullification does actually stack with resist element so that's also increasing another chance to uh, block an attack entirely which i find to be completely bullshit if it already reaches about like 20 percent or even 15 percent that's really high to me i was like what uh clairvoyance this is only for item hunting if you're going to pick up clairvoyance you definitely want to pick up resetting uh, resetting shows you what item an enemy is going to drop when you use it on them uh, clairvoyance will show you what hap what they're going to drop um, when you use resetting clairvoyance is automatically applied if you haven't learned and if you reset then it'll re-roll another item and then you can see what they're dropping if they're dropping like multiple items it'll show multiple icons as well and then the other thing about this is arcane energy is the thing you want here uh, you want this at max when you can uh, prophecy also very useful counter spell at least and then change at least one into change so you basically want every spell activated here and then the extra four points you can put it in is whatever you want arcane energy is another buff increases maximum sp so you become an hp battery and an sp battery which is quite a lot of stuff and finally catalyst catalyst is weird i never got up to this but i was like what the hell is all these skills right Apparently, you can derive a number off of an enemy's name. <laughs> I thought this was hilarious as fuck. I'm gonna be a mathematician. So you can, like, determine numbers off their names. <laughs> and then you get, like, a number. And then based on that number, you can use another skill and either reduce their levels or whatever. So I think this is a great way if you want to power level someone. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, Revenge Sevenfold is definitely, like, something probably towards PvP. Einsoff is, like, a magic circle that restores... SP? <laughs> I was like, this thing restores SP, what is this? <laughs> um, it says increases max HP for a period of time, but um, if you learn this attribute here, it says exchanges half of the maximum HP recovery for SP recovery instead. I was like, what? <laughs> so it's like, you'll be an SP battery as well, so people don't need potions anymore if you become this. And that's what I wanted to do, I was gonna do like Gematria Notarecon? Reduce level, like, only one level into that because based on the number that you derive of their name, you can work with that number. And I thought this was the most interesting class ever. I was like, Catalyst, what a weirdo class. <laughs> Can't wait for rank 8 and 9 to come out and see what this advances into in the Circle 2 and Circle 3 for it. And that's, uh, that's the Cleric build that I was gonna do. I would obviously take Merkaba, so I have an actual third attack. Apart from smite, <laughs> God. So, uh, oh, the other thing about smite is that um, you want this knockdown damage thing here. This knockdown damage is basically it'll launch an enemy and then it'll push them around. Um, a lot of people don't take this because it's annoying as fuck. But um, as a support, I actually take this on to actually position enemies. So if if there's like stragglers in them, like a huge group of enemies that the party's fighting, I would actually walk up to the stragglers and smash them into the into the chaos. And either that, you can also play basketball with Zybus as well. You drop your Zybus circles and then you just hit the mobs and into the into the circles with Smite. Smite. So guys, that's uh, the cleric build that I'm actually running. So if you want to mess around with it, I mean, like you gotta have patience, though. I swear to God, this is Zybus is your only attack in this build. You will be either bored as fuck or you will love the inglorious lightning spam. <sighs> Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this video, now, I hope this gave you some ideas, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, I hope you'll stay tuned for more other stuff of other games, bye bye for now. <laughs>
Thank you.